Hello world, my name is Ihor and today let's make a beat from scratch on the analog rhythm. And also I wanted to share one of the tricks that I really like with performance markers, so stay tuned. It's been a minute since this machine was on this desk and uh, I did not forget about it and I did not put it on the shelf and it's not collecting dust over there. The rhythm is my favorite drum machine. I do have Syntact, I do have the Digitact, but uh, for me at least, for my particular setup, rhythm holds uh, quite a bit more to it, especially when it comes to scenes and performance. These are great tools to fine tune your performance and stuff like that, which are not present on the Syntact or the Digitact. Or song mode, which I started digging lately, and um, it's actually not that complicated, it's quite easy. And by the way, if you're interested in me covering this song mode in one of my future videos, please let me know in the description down below. And the idea today is to make a minimal hypnotic techno groove. So I'm gonna use these two, one and fifth for kick and bass tom or rumble. This is gonna be our uh, synth line or hypnotic synth, then the rim shot and clap, and a couple of hats, like closed and open one. And I think that's gonna be pretty much it. And also, I don't want this video to be super long, so yeah, let's get started. But first things first, let's set tempo into 138 and enable um, the advanced mode in scale mode so that we can have different amount of pages per different track. So I'm setting change in length to 128, which is essentially eight bars. And we can get started with the kick drum. I'm gonna put like four on the floor, easy peasy, and then let's sell it. Oh my God, silky. So the kick drum, I would like it to be quite subtle but have click and dust in it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, th I think like this and then filter out just to have like low end frequencies. And now I'm gonna go into the LFO. So basically I would like to give it some energy. I really like tracks when the kick drum is not always the same. So that's why I'm going into LFO, which is gonna go into the filter. Yeah, let's um, let's start with filter frequency. I think it's gonna work. And then kind of slowly moving triangle wave. And then I'm gonna introduce a little bit. So it's gonna kind of move the filter frequency cutoff and We're gonna hear more of a click and dust and then less of a click and dust. Yeah, a bit of resonance, yeah, like this, but I think it's too much. Yeah, exactly like this, but I really want it to be a subtle. Less resonance, I think it's getting a touch boxy. Yeah, I think like that will work. And then let's go into the bass tom. I'm gonna put classic triggers like that. And then yeah, like this. And now we need to control it with amp envelope. touch of overdrive and then mix it in. Filter. Yeah, like this and then maybe we can do like copy this one here and make it lower the velocity, copy it here. No, actually I'm gonna copy this one here, this one here, copy, paste, yeah. And then another thing which we can do here, maybe we'll drive it a bit more. Then I'm gonna go and add a trigger on the first, um, on the first trigger, on the fifth one later, ninth and the thirteenth, where our kick drum is. But with this one, I'm gonna introduce the amp envelope quite significantly so that 
it kind of creates this kind of like side chain or whatever. Uh, it's gonna give kick some place to actually hit and then give it some kind of rumble at the end. So I really like this technique and we can we can have a listen to that. But now we have to work a little bit more with with the sounds on the rumble. So I'm, I'm gonna overdrive it a little bit and to lower the velocity. I don't want it to be so much present. Yeah, like this, then we go and copy again. Yeah, like this. Yeah. And then we can also work on the amp envelope on the on the kick drum. So I'm gonna mute this guy. Have this muted for some reason. Anyways, so on the kick drum, I'm going back to decay, introducing more decay to the synth machine, and then we can control it with an amp envelope. Basically, leave it some decay so that it kind of do not does not cut itself. But uh, then we can control with the whole time. We can give it exact amount of like of the low end of kick that we need actually. So. So what I would like to achieve with this kick and rumble is that the energy is consistent. Like it's never dropping the energy. It always has this kind of like pumping effect, right? Yeah, I like it actually. Now let's go into the into the hi hat. Hi hats, uh, they are annoying on he on the on the rhythm. I I just don't like them. But but let's try to find something. So lately I've been super into like weird hi hats. Again, let's make it longer. Overdrive, and then we can mix it in. Oops, I'm gonna put like simple pattern like that. And now we can introduce amp envelope again. Filter, maybe we can use band pass. Synth engine. Yeah, like this. But also this one is uh, not quite slappy, actually. Slappy. So I need this one to hit a little bit harder on the transient, actually. So that's why we can use an LFO here. I'm gonna go with an LFO into, into the overdrive. Yeah. And then we select an exponential wave one as a trig. So basically on every trig is gonna trigger the wave only once, which essentially makes this LFO as an envelope. And then with the speed and multiplier, we can control the decay amount of this exponential envelope. And it's gonna be routed into the overdrive. So it makes it like overdriven and louder and then decays, so. This is gonna work. Let's pan it a little bit to the right, to the left. And now I'm gonna go and copy this sound into the another track with into the open hi hat. And I'm gonna introduce the same triggers. But here we're gonna make an envelope a bit more open, the amp envelope, but pretty much the same sound. So it chokes the closed hat. So it plays alone over here. And then we can maintain our energy levels by muting and going back to shorter hi-hat or unmuting and going back to 
open hi hat, just making them a touch quieter. But uh, then we can address that also with uh, the the levels. We can compress it. And also on the uh, on the closed hats, let's add some kind of ghost. Um, not here, but on this track, ghost hats or whatever you call them, with lower velocities, and that's gonna play like on the fourth. This is gonna play on the last out of eight bars. Gonna also send it a little bit into reverb, no, into delay actually, just a bit, and into re reverb. Yeah, like this. I actually really like it. And then we can copy this one and set it here. And for example, this is gonna be every every first out of three runs. And then we can copy it here as well. And here, this is gonna be random. And then change bit the velocities because they are basically are this all the same now on the ghost hats. Yeah, like this. Great. And then we can listen this with the open eye. Yeah. Nice. And now let's add a clap. And for clap, I'm gonna go into the into this sample pool or sound browser. Here, there is a filter. Uh, it was already on the clap. That's great. And um, yeah, I really want to use this one actually. It's way too loud. And it's gonna be our classic, uh, super classic clap. Yes. Maybe we can have these guys on the fill condition, just in case I remember to use the fill button. And we can send them into reverb and delay. Cool. I think uh, that's gonna work just good. And I'm gonna cut the low with a with the filter. Overdrive it a little bit. Also, we can use, ah, oh, LFO is used here already. That's fine. Then we don't really need an LFO. So this is the, a little like problem with the sounds that are there developed by other people. Sometimes you like, okay, I'm gonna use LFO on it for something, but LFO is already in use. Um, and that's where actually Digitact is a bit better because it has two LFOs and Syntact two, but not on the analog engines. Anyways, let's continue. So rim shot. Um, let me find some kind of an interesting rim shot for us, and um, then we're gonna do our synth line. So let's start. Yeah, I like this one. Let's uh, proceed with this one. So this one is going to be some kind of something like this. This one we can play on the fourth with the lower velocity, obviously. No, actually, let's do it every second time. No, even first time, I think it's, it's gonna be all good. And club can be panned a little bit to the right. And now let's go for a synth. I'm gonna go for 
the dual VCO. Oh my god. And we can have a long one going. But then we can use filter. And also let's go into the chromatic mode. And that's gonna work but uh, before we proceed uh, let's also configure the reverb the long tail reverb with it's gonna be kind of dark no shells whatsoever and then also the delay which is gonna be ping pong wide goes back into reverb and also a little bit like towards the darker side and I'm gonna be using the uh, this like one eighth with dot, dotted one eighth, which creates uh, like additional rhythms of delay, uh, which I really like. So let's. Yeah, maybe something like this we can, uh, we can use. Like call and response. Let's try to use two bars here and um... yeah, something like this. It's a cheesy thing, but I think it's gonna work, anyways. work on the sound a little bit. It, it has to be quite subtle. Okay. Okay, I like it. The only thing, let's also pan around these guys a little bit. some sort of like wide energy and a bit of overdrive. I think this um, rim shot is too loud. Okay, that's fine. And also let's use the amp envelope. ones to have longer actually hold time and then what can we use for an LFO balancing in between the two oscillators so it's gonna be balance of the dual VCO and then what I would like to achieve is to also have it quite slowly moving and changing the balance a little bit so that we kind of always evolving with the sound It 
fits really well with the kick drum. Cool. Let's see if we are good for all the levels. Just a bit of more overdrive to the clap. to the open hi-hat. I want it to bring more energy. And then if we drop it, yes. Let's go quickly into the distortion over here. Bring a bit distortion to the whole thing. And overdrive to the delay, just a little bit. And then let's compress it. So I want transients to pass through, then we can find the threshold, something like this. Oh, it's too loud, of course, but... sounds good for me. Anyways, I'm, I'm not really doing the masterpiece here anyways. So it sounds good. Now let me show you the, the trick actually. So we go into the performance mode. So the first one I wanted to show is this one. So I'm gonna select the, the first uh, performance macros over here and then select the synth with the track. And then holding the performance macros, we can for example, for these performance macros, we can open up the resonance a little bit more, like just five, I think it's gonna be enough, and then opening up the filter quite a lot. Basically, let's do like plus 70, whatever. It's almost to fully open. And now if I play the synth sound only, so the filter is closed, sort of, like this. And then when I press this one, it's gonna both open the filter and add resonance. And depending on how, how much you press, it's gonna convert this uh, like pressure into the amount uh, of macros applied to the, to the parameters. Hope that wasn't confusing. But another thing that we can do, we can, uh, for example, lock this macros like this into the quick performance amount uh, knob over here. And then we can do our mutes and use this knob to open up the filter. I think this is quite handy, but it's gonna become even more handy <laughs> now. So we've got this one, the performance macros that opens up the filter. I'm gonna go select another one. So we have basically 12 of, he of them here. And here I would go into the effects track, into the distortion, and while holding this one, add distortion or overdrive delay, route delay into the overdrive uh, circuit. So I'm gonna start with plus 20. I think uh, it's gonna be enough, but we can, we can fine tune. And now if I start the sequence, so we have this delay feedback going, right? And if I press uh, this performance thing here, You can hear how like it becomes louder. The delay uh, lines, they become louder because they go through the overdrive circuit and we can Im introduce even more. And then we can combine both of these together. So it makes delay louder. and opens up the filter and resonance that we did on the first over here. I think it's quite handy for performance. Also on this one, what we can do is to go into the, to the delay and also make feedback, more feedback, maybe plus 10. You have to be really careful with delay feedback and whatnot. It can basically create a loop of feedback and uh, become quite loud, so be gentle with these settings. 
So to recap, we have one performance uh, macros right here, which opens the filter frequency and also makes the resonance higher. And then the second one, which uh, sends more um, delay lines into the overdrive circuit and also increases the feedback of delay. So it kind of feeds delay back more. And the beautiful thing about this is that you can combine two of different uh, macros together for this quick performance amount uh, knob. And now if we're gonna be playing with it, it's, um, we can go into mute modes or chromatic modes or play mode, whatever. We don't have to be on the performance uh, page anymore. And then we can use this knob as our performance macros knob. If we want only filter, we go back to performance and we lock only filter. And if we want to make like filter and kind of some sort of like feedback, overdriven, uh, washout effect, whatever, we can select both of them and do this. I think that's cool. And then you can combine up to, I think, 12 of these for this quick performance thing. And this can get really, really interesting and creative, basically combining different macroses together, having your own strategy on how you're going to perform through them. I think that's, uh, that's pretty amazing. This is our groove. Instead of going into the filter here and working with it, we can do it with just one knob. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today's video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. And I hope you've learned something new for yourself that you can apply to your own mu music production workflow or at least got inspired to go and make music. And if you're considering to support me, you can uh, help this video to go through the algorithm. So like it, subscribe to my channel, bell button and all this stuff. Also, there is a Patreon link in the description down below where you can support me with some money and get some additional content and interactions with me. And uh, also I'm posting um, in all my videos the affiliate links in the description for all the gear that they feature. So if you're considering to purchase something, you don't have to, but you can use affiliate links. There is gonna be no extra costs for you, but some a little commission for me.
And if you would like to check other Beats from Scratch videos, you can check either this one or that one. I appreciate you and until the next time, have fun.